good evening everybody and welcome to an evening with Luna Press. Tonight I am here with uh, Tiffany Angus and Val Nolan all the way from uh, well the UK although Tiffany could potentially be in America and uh, Val uh, all the way from Ireland. <laughs> Good evening to you too. Welcome, guys. Welcome. Hello. Welcome. Hello. How are you? <laughs> so we are here to launch uh, one of Academia Lunaris books, and uh, here it is: uh, Spec Fic for Newbies, uh, a beginner's guide to writing subgenres of science fiction, fantasy, and horror. Congratulations! Your book looks amazing. Well done. <laughs> Yay. All right, so to start us off, first of all, I would like to introduce myself. For those of you that don't know me, I am Francesca Barbini, the owner of Luna Press Publishing. And tonight I am here with the Luna family. We are here with, uh, I was saying, Tiffany Angus and Val Nolan. So would you like to introduce yourself to our um, viewers? Oh, hi, everybody. Nice, nice of you all to be here. Um, I'm Val Nolan, and I, uh, I'm a writer of science fiction. Uh, I'm an academic. Uh, I thought the creative practice modules uh, regarding science fiction, fantasy, comic books, uh, as well as more general writing courses in Aberystwyth University in Wales uh, for about seven years. Uh, before that, I thought uh, I thought here at home in Ireland at the University of Galway, where I also thought creative writing. Um, I'm very interested in, I suppose, the way in which science fiction allows us to engage with with the world around us and to engage with non typical sort of ideas, um, like what is it like to what is it like to be an astronaut who never goes to space, or what is it like to live in in a science fictional environment, but there's still there's still farm animals there. There's still there's still ordinary everyday things that interface between the now as we experience it outside our windows and the future that is out there imaginatively around us. Uh, and one of the things I've been very keen to use in in my teaching always has been this idea of of using the world around us, allowing people, helping students to to figure out how can they apply ideas of science fiction and fantasy and even horror to the world as they see it. Um, I have published many stories in magazines such as Inner Zone, uh, BSF Horizons. Uh, I've had work long listed and shortlisted for the BSFA awards, uh, as well as for the Theodore Sur Sturgeon Prize. Um, I also do a lot of academic writing. So I have academic pieces published in Science Fiction Studies, Irish University Review, uh, Journal of Graphic Novels and Comics, the, the sort of material or the sort of venues that allow people to engage with science fiction, fantasy, horror in a very, very serious way. And some of those ideas are, are the type of things that I like to bring to bear in my teaching. Thank you very much, Val. Hi. Tiffany! <laughs> You're going to make me follow that. Um, yeah, hi, everybody. I'm Tiffany Angus. Um, I'm an ex-academic. I spent, I think, about 12 years teaching writing in the U.S. and here in the U.K. at, like, three different universities. Um, I mainly taught creative writing. I taught, uh, I, my focus was science fiction, fantasy, and horror. I taught, of course, like Val, undergrads, MA students, and PhD students um, who were specializing in fantasy and science fiction. Um, I'm also a published author. My debut novel, Threading the Labyrinth, came out in 2020, just as we went into lockdown, but was shortlisted for the BSFA and the BFS awards for best novel. I also write short fiction. Um, unlike Val, whose science fiction tends toward the really science fiction-y science fiction, mine is more of the post-apocalyptic and time travel focus. Um, but most of my science fiction fantasy writing is in historical fantasy. I basically like to play with dead people's lives. Um, I like to go back in, in, in history and find people who were alive and play with their lives in my in my stories. Val and I met at Clarion. I attend a lot of workshops. Um, I am very active in the fan and the convention community. And right now I'm working on some special projects. Um, I'm working on some actual erotica, historical erotica, strangely. I'm writing costume porn that's actual <laughs> costume porn. Um, and I'm also working on building um, online creative writing teaching, uh, science fiction fantasy teaching classes. Um, like Val, I do like to use my writing to explore what's going on in the world right now. I think that's one of the greatest things about science fiction, fantasy, and horror is that it's not, on the, on the surface, it looks like it's about other planets or it's about, you know, dragons and fairies and elves and whatnot, but it's actually about us. And I think that's one of its 
greatest assets. Um, I think that's all about me right now. <laughs> Fantastic. No, but thank you both uh, for sharing uh, your background with our viewers because, uh, of course, uh, the book uh, that we're launching tonight, Spec Fic for Newbies, uh, relies on, on your strength, on your experience uh, in actually teaching and delivering uh, creative writing modules on uh, SFF and horror. So this normally at this point, uh, I would uh, ask about how a book came to be, but I can actually answer that question myself. <laughs> so what I would like to share with our viewer is the fact that I watched uh, uh, Tiffany do a workshop online at EasterCon a couple of years ago. And uh, I was immediately um, not just uh, uh, taken by you know, the style and the delivery and everything and how how you managed to make it so accessible, but also equally to the fact that you you were explaining things which uh, either I gave for granted or I never really put a lot of thoughts into. And it came to me, the fact that I'm sure I'm not the only person on the planet that gets confused between alternate history, historical fantasy and this and that. So I actually thought, Tiffany, I need to know more. And uh, the readers need to know more. After we started talking, um, Tiffany decided to talk to her colleague and friend, Val, who also had an incredible amount of experience on the subject. So my question now back to you, how did you decide to approach uh, this idea that literally I throw at you of putting together such a book? <laughs> Well, you know, so I, I did the workshop and it is, it is a workshop that I had done at the beginning of lockdown when everybody went online. And I thought, you know, how can I keep people writing at home and interested in doing stuff when they're not in class? And so I did that workshop and I did it again at EasterCon. And yeah. And you came to me and said, do you want to write a book? And I thought, hmm, well, <laughs> this was fun to do. And it had a structure. And I can talk about different types of fantasy and science fiction and horror. But there are types that I don't write or I don't know as intimately. Um, and so I instantly thought of Val. Val and I met at Clarion. Uh, we did Clarion together in 2009, which feels like a million hundred years ago. And, you know, through the years, we've been at other workshops together and we've been on um, convention panels together. And, you know, we have debriefs when we go to cons together and we talk about writing all the time. And I thought, OK, I know he's somebody who would totally be perfect for doing this. And we can talk about all the different subgenres that we love so much. And it was so it was a way for us to take our academic leanings and yep. our experience as teachers and our absolute nerdiness <laughs> and mash them all together and have a lot of fun because that's that's one thing with writing classes is sometimes people take them so seriously you know when they get they get kind of locked down and i mean i've drawn t-rexes and zombie ships on the board before when i've taught like i know val's done the same thing i've seen his drawings of robots so we needed a way to take the fun of it and bring it all together. Okay. And so I think I think that answers your question roundaboutly. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Val has been uh, has been amazing uh, to have your input in the book. What did you think about the idea? Were you excited when you first heard? I, yeah, I was really excited because it seemed like it seemed like such the per the perfect opportunity for us to take to take our classroom teaching experience and the stuff that's only ever experienced by, by 30 or 40 or 50 students per year and to be able to share that with everybody, to be able to say like the, the subsections in the book, the various things we might be talking about spaceships or robots or aliens, or we might be talking about, we might be talking about horror tropes or fantasy tropes. They're all based on our, on what we do in the classroom. The idea here, uh, the part of it that really grabbed me was the fact of how do I take what we do in the classroom for two hours, condense it down into a sub, a sub chapter that somebody can read through this and say, yeah, actually, I get, I get the sense of having been there in the classroom with Tiffany or being there in the classroom with Belle. This is what I would experience. Um, and in fact, most of the, most of the subsections in the book are based on, you know, the actual instances of the different modules that we thought, uh, in the, down through the various years. And a lot of that was done. I know Tiffany was talking about doing stuff online there, but a lot of that was sort of modified again and condensed and became much clearer during, during the lockdown period because most of our teaching moved online. You know, we were giving these classes in a kind of an online way every, every week. And, uh, to just be able to sort of try to capture that energy in a, in, you know, in a bottle somehow and share it with everybody. I think that was really, really important to do that. 
That's incredible. And, and you know, actually, I was thinking, uh, uh, you know, in your respective experience, uh, what is the thing that you love the most uh, about teaching uh, a creative writing course? Uh, I caught you off guard oh, here, but... No, no, it, it's... I, I don't know about Val, but for me, it's that if I'm standing in front of a classroom um, and even online, if everybody has their camera on, please turn your camera on, everybody. <laughs> it's that ping. It's when you see the penny drop and the student goes, oh, I get that now. I know what you're talking about. And they get all excited about stuff. That is a good moment because you finally realize, oh, I actually make sense. And I'm not talking bollocks. <laughs> oh, good. What about you, Val? What do you think? Uh, something something very similar. The moment when the student gets it, the moment when the, the person who's come to class to be like, yeah, okay, whatever. I watch, I guess I watch Star Wars. I, I, I guess I know what science fiction is. And you're like, yeah, that's a really good starting point. But then they realize, oh, actually, hang on. There's so much more. There's, it's this and it's this and it's this. And they realize they can, they can take the things in their real lives and they can write science fiction stories about it or they can write fantasy stories about it or they can write horror stories about it. They realize that these are just, these aren't just a section of the bookstore that people sometimes go, oh, no, that's not real. They realize that this is the most real literature that there is. They realize that this is about themselves and people like them and they can, they can use it as a sort of a metaphorical toolbox to describe the problems and the issues and things that are happening around them. And when they realize that, it's like, oh, yeah, okay, actually, this is that energizes the whole room. That's excellent. We, we basically bring them to the dark side and then, oh, yeah. you know. <laughs> we, they become one of us. Fabulous. Remaining on the topic of creative writing courses, then, uh, what would you say are the benefits that uh, they can provide to an author, a new author, a debut author, you know, or even an experienced author? What what kind of benefit do you see coming from such courses? Yeah, I'll take this one. Um, time. What you're doing when you take a creative writing course is that you are giving yourself time to practice your art. And it's, it's, it's like, it's like becoming a carpenter. It's like becoming a, it's like becoming a, a painter. It's like becoming a sculptor. The more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. And when you commit to doing a creative writing course, and maybe you're going to do a three year undergraduate degree, maybe you're going to do a one year masters, uh, maybe you're going to do a PhD in it. You're giving yourself the opportunity to, to practice your work on a sustained basis without as many of the distractions of real life as are possible. And it's not possible for everybody. Obviously, people have family commitments, they have job commitments, they have all those things going on as well. But they're making sort of a commitment to themselves, not to a university or not to a lecturer or not to anything like that. They're saying to themselves, I'm going to work on my writing now. I have the time and the opportunity to do this. I can try new things. I can try genres I've never written before. And the amount of people that you see coming into creative writing courses and they're like, I just write literary fiction or I just write poetry. And they come out and they're like, yeah, actually, I write comic books now. I, I write horror novellas now and vice versa. Sometimes people go in and they're like, no, this is the only thing I do. I only write stories about, about monsters and spaceships. And they come out and it's like, no, actually, actually, no, I, I'm going to write a play now. Now. I'm going to write something completely different and, and, and much more down to earth. It's a way. It's a way for people to discover not just not just how to be better at writing, but also what kind of writing that they're that they're good at. And oftentimes, that's different from the type of writing that they enjoy reading, and that can be a surprise to many people sometimes. True. Yeah, definitely. And the the exact same thing. I would I would answer the exact same about time. And the other thing, though, is that when you take creative writing courses, you become part of a community. So, mm. so often when we write, we're by ourselves. But writing doesn't really exist in a vacuum. You know, even those of us who have been doing it professionally, you know, we still have um, our own writing groups. We have our beta readers. Um, I still go to workshops. I still attend, you know, different ways to, to learn more about my own writing. So when we have students who come into class, like Val said, sometimes they say, oh, I just write this or I just write this other thing. Well, they're sitting suddenly in a community of other writers and they learn to expand their ideas of what it is they do. And they learn to trust each other, which is incredibly important. Um, they learn how to give feedback, which which is one of those things that I think gets underrated because the better you get at giving feedback, the better you get at writing and editing your own work. Now that you mentioned the word community and uh, we're talking a little bit about groups, bo both of yeah, you guys met uh, during Clarion. What do you think about uh, um, 
when you know Milford, Clarion, this this sort of experiences, what can you share with uh, perhaps our our writers who have never attended one of those? Uh... So I didn't realize I was a science fiction writer until around two thousand eight. Okay, uh, early two thousand, late two thousand. I had no idea. I um I was working. I I worked at a um a play, We wrote textbooks. I worked for an educational materials developer. We wrote textbooks, and this was in Ohio. And my best friend worked there too. And she was reading Scalzi's whatever blog, and she said, "Oh, you need to read the blog today. It's about um this workshop." And I read about Viable Paradise, which is at um it's on Martha's Vineyard every October. Okay. And I read it and I was like, no, I don't write science fiction and fantasy. And then I realized, no, I've actually been writing some really weird stories. <laughs> and I applied and, and I got in. And that one was 20 some odd people and then like eight instructors, including John Scalzi, Elizabeth Bear, Patrick Nielsen Hayden, Laura Gould, you know, et cetera, et cetera, a bunch of great instructors. And so that was very much set up as here's your community of other writers and here's the instructors you're going to learn from. Okay. Clarion was six weeks. It was the same sort of thing. And it was intense, super intense. But I got off of uh, when I left Bible Paradise, I immediately applied for Clarion um, and was on a wait list. And then somebody had to drop out. Thank you, whoever you were. And I ended up going to Clarion and it changed my life in certain ways. Milford's a bit different. Milford, you already have to have published something. And there isn't a teacher. It's more of a, um, it's a workshop and it's a, it's a critique workshop. So it's, it's a bit of a different vibe. It's a bit of a different thing, but there are a lot of great workshops out there. Um, if people are curious about them, they can Google them, look them up, see, see what they do. Some are expensive. Some have bursaries. Um, some have ways to help people out, but I would recommend them, but you have to go in sort of knowing that you're going to start to develop a thick skin. Um, writing is not for the, <laughs> writing is a tough thing <laughs> you know but you mentioned uh, the ability to to give good feedback and in this case we can also mention the ability to receive feedback because sometimes you might find as an author that you say oh yes yes i want you to tell me everything why did you reject my work why did you not like it if you were to say everything uh, would the author really appreciate it? I mean, generally, yes, of course, and you do it professionally. But do you know what I mean? Like the thick skin uh, goes both ways in the sense that the the finding the courage and the and the professional manner to give a feedback, but equally to receive that feedback and see what we can do with it. Oh, I've, I'm I'm just I'm just thinking about what you're saying there about about professional feedback and so on, and a lot of a lot of the a lot of the way in which we practice these things in our classes nowadays, I mean, we learned it from the instructors that we had in places like Clarion. We had terrific instructors there. We had Paul Park and we had Liz Hand and we had Holly Black and we had Kim Stanley Robinson. We had people there who really, they modeled good practice in terms of being writing teachers. And it is, it is about honesty and it's about vulnerability as well. Although the word gets thrown about maybe, maybe, maybe too much. It's about not just the person who has written the story being vulnerable in sharing it. It's about the reader admitting their own vulnerability and saying, yeah, this is what I liked about it. This is what I didn't like about it. And finding the, finding the courage to not sit there and say, oh yeah, everything was great. I loved it. Finding the courage <laughs> to be able to say, this didn't work for me. And this is why I think it didn't work for me to be able to, and this is where the, I suppose this is where the university thing kicks in again, to be able to, to analyze why they didn't like something. And I always tell the students in my classes, it's fine, whether we're, it's a, a critical class or a creative class, it's fine if you don't like something, as long as you're able to explain why. And as long as you're able to take a stab at saying, you know, it was, it was this character moment, or it was the setting didn't ring through in this way, or it was some aspect of the, of the language didn't really work for me. Obviously being able to offer a suggestion saying, would you try this? Would you try that? Uh, but but being able to realize that it is it is a two way vulnerability. It's a dialogue. It's between the writer and the reader, and it's one of those rare occasions where the writer will will obviously get to discuss their work with readers directly because a lot of the time, a lot of the time, the book is out there, and somebody might tell you something about it in passing, but they won't they won't go into great detail. What we saw in in something like Clarion, or what you see in something like Milford, or indeed what I hope you would see in our classes, is that same sort of of two-way communication that will hopefully improve people's writing style, but also improve people's reading style as well and get them thinking more analytically about why they like things, why they don't like other things. And I think creating better readers 
as well as creating better writers is is a part of the workshop process. That was one of the most important things for me as well from doing workshops was learning how to do a critique by watching the people who ran them. And then that's what we do because our students are, you know, when they're younger and they suddenly come to university, they've been used to saying, oh, I liked it. But when we run a, a, a circle and we say, OK, this is where it didn't work and here's why they start to realize, oh, OK, I have to think about it more. I have to think about it more deeply. And so I think that's one of the benefits of doing a writing course as well. It's, if, you know, it has that kind of critique setup where you can learn to really analyze and like Val says, become a better reader. I think you're both right. I find uh, that some of the most successful reviewers in the business are actually those reviewers who are able to say, I can see the, the strength uh, for me, this doesn't work because uh, they make it a much more constructive uh, um, review. For about ten years, I reviewed uh, I reviewed books for national newspapers here in Ireland, like the like the Irish Examiner or the, or the Sunday Business Post, and it was an opportunity to really to really analyze stuff. I always described it to people, probably a bit too fancifully, as as this was the, the the bleeding edge of literary criticism is what happens in the books review pages of of newspapers or on blogs or so on. It is the the first stab at being able to say this is what this book is about. This is why this is great. This is why maybe it doesn't work as much. Um, and the opportunity when you got to write a longer piece, because a lot of the reviews would be short, they'd be like four hundred words or something. And you don't really get, but some of them are twelve hundred words, and you really get to grips with, with with a piece of work, and you really get to sit with something and analyze it for a long time. And I think, in some ways, I think that that helped to make me a better writer as well as as, as a better critic or a better academic. But it was it was just an opportunity to engage with a sort of a, uh, engage with the work in a more in a more discursive fashion that was useful. Yeah. Excellent. Oh, fabulous. So let's go back to spec fig for newbies then. What I would like to ask you now, since uh, obviously your experiences with students, uh, uh, either in person or online, so what are the benefits ca that our our uh, readers can uh, gather from the book? Uh, and uh, basically, what makes this book different uh, from uh, uh, other writing guides? And there's a few things that makes this book different. And the first is, and the first is in the title. It's spec fic for newbies. This is not, this is not another general purpose writing guide. This is a book which is very specific. This is how you describe big dumb objects in space. And here is the, the theories behind them. Here is how you describe, you know, horror, like, 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 like cosmic horror. This is how you get the sense of unease that accompanies that. It's very, very specific in terms of the subgenres that we're looking at here. It's very specific in terms of the type of imaginative and creative tools that readers will need to achieve success, one hopes, in these individual subgenres. It is a work which is deeply, deeply rooted in our in our knowledge and experience and our reading and our viewing and our love of science fiction and fantasy and horror. Uh, and that, I suppose, leads to the second thing that makes the book uh, that makes the book different from other guides out there. It's it's unapologetically nerdy. We're not <laughs> even pretending that we're like, oh no, well, serious academics here. We don't <laughs> no, 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 no. We're serious writers here. We're serious <laughs> academics, and we love science fiction. And we love fantasy, and we love horror. And that hopefully that 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 love of these genres is dripping off of every one of these pages here. The sense in which this is something that we we adore these genres. We adore reading them and writing them. We know that there's a lot of other people out there who adore reading them and writing them. And perhaps want to get better at writing them and we're not we're not making any judgments about that this is not one of these writing guides that says oh there's only one type of writing that you can do this is a no actually there's no rules do whatever the hell you want this is a buffet of subgenres for you to dip in and out of as you see fit to combine and to recombine them and to it's essentially we're not we're doing the opposite of gatekeeping with this book we're trying to give you the keys to open all the gates and see what what flows out of that and hopefully people will will engage with that and hopefully people will love will love trying some of these things i loved uh, how clearly structured uh, it was uh, uh, obviously you know we have the three main sections you got you know science fiction fantasy and horror and each of these section has all the their sub uh, their sub genres but also within each section uh, you were actually able to give us a brief uh, 
history, mentioning both uh, media, like from, from movies to books, etc., which can really, you know, um, make, uh, I suppose, the image even clearer. I found it so informative, getting all these ideas firing up uh, the, and the workshop, the practical tips, the practical exercises for each chapter mm -hmm. are so uh, focused and so engaging as well. So I absolutely love what you did with it. And, uh, and I actually started to do a few of the exercises myself <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. That's, that, and that's exactly what we want people to do because because what happens quite often in in writing classes is you know the instructor says okay you're going to write a story and everybody goes huh, what about and so we approach the activities with we're going to give you very specific things to do and from there it will branch off and you will you know go down a new path we know that the more specific you are the more the more it opens up um, your brain. Creativity is problem solving. And so we've given the, the readers a problem to solve and then their creativity will help fill that in. That is an excellent way to put it. Absolutely. So when it comes to the audience of this book, then what do you think? Um, it'll appeal to people who are newer writers who maybe, you know, they like to read science fiction, but they've never thought they could write it because they think they have to be a scientist or they have to, you know, have watched every episode ever of Star Trek, Val, or, you know, <laughs> what have you. <laughs> You know, so so it's gonna appeal to those people who think, okay, I, how do I, how do I, I need a way in, you know, um, and so that's that's who I was thinking of when I wrote it. How can this help somebody who's never tried this before? Yeah, another way in which the book I think will appeal to people will be in terms of the the individual histories in each each subgenre section. That science fiction and fantasy and horror are not just monolithic entities. They're, they're composed of this very rich, sort of very well developed, in some cases, centuries long traditions. Uh, and there's an awful lot of works there in which people will be like, Oh, maybe I didn't, I didn't realize that was there. I didn't, I didn't think of that as, as something that fell under the heading of fantasy or fell under the heading of horror. But yeah, actually it is. There's work there that they can weave their own writing in and out of in terms of, in terms of creating a discussion or a discourse with literary history. And in terms of the way in that Tiffany was describing, the, this is another way in, another way for them to realize that these are such rich, highly developed genres. Um, it reminds me of when I, when I took over the, when I took over the science fiction course in Aberystwyth initially, it was just science fiction and fantasy and you did all of that in 10 weeks and I, I thought that for a year and I was like this I know this how what 10 weeks so we, we broke it up into into 20 weeks so there's 10 weeks of science fiction there's 10 weeks of fantasy we added the comic books later on another 10 weeks the idea that you can keep bifurcating bifurcating and bifurcating these genres down into smaller more nuanced very specific pieces and I think that people will find a real richness when they look at the book that they're like yeah I didn't realize that these these subgenres or even sub subgenres in one or two cases they're that themselves are such are such rich, interesting, really vigorous pieces of, of, of literary history. And I think people will find find things in there that maybe they did not expect to find and maybe find things that they'll be able to write based on that. That's and awesome. they're also going to find the links between things because as we wrote it, you know, in each section as we'd write it, we would find, oh, okay, this subgenre or this trope overlaps with this other one we've talked about. And we say, see, you know, see zombies or see robots or whatever. Yeah. Because there's no absolute structured wall between these three genres it just doesn't exist they're all they all morph into each other and so i think another thing so readers and writers will look at it and realize oh okay actually i am dabbling in horror a little bit when i write about this other thing absolutely no, it's it, this is amazing. Uh, you know your enthusiasm as well. Uh, it, it does uh, really, you know, come through the book as well. You know, and uh, I think our readers, no matter even if they're not writers, uh, I think everybody can benefit. And I think uh, for a reader, it can make you even. Um, I don't know, I guess uh, um, a, a more diverse reader, perhaps. Uh, you end up uh, exploring uh, maybe a subgenre that you have never done before. And, uh, you know, and uh, the chapter on that will make you want to go, mm, I would like to know more about that. Would you like to know more? <laughs> a la Starship Troopers, there you go. And, uh, and then you're going to go and find out more. Oh, that is fabulous. So... Our amazing book is coming out uh, on the 28th of March. And uh, we are going to have a lovely launch uh, at EasterCon uh, in Birmingham. This year is in Birmingham. So if uh, you're watching this video uh, before April 
2023, then uh, you know that you have time not just to pre-order the book, uh, but also to come to EasterCon and uh, toast uh, with Tiffany and Val uh, and celebrate uh, the release of SpecFic for newbies. But before we say goodbye, I would like to leave you with a little surprise, which uh, um, is uh, incoming. So, Tiffany Val, would you like to tell our viewer this little uh, pre-announcement uh, official secret? Not a secret. Book two. <laughs> we, we started writing volume two of Specfic for Newbies. The working title is Specfic for Newbies 2, Subgenre Boogaloo, which... <laughs> Makes me laugh every time I think about it. <laughs> I mean, we had so much fun writing the first one, yeah. and, and we had so much to we had so much to talk about that didn't make it into the first one that we thought, yeah, actually, a, a second one where we can we can be a little bit more a little bit more indulgent and dig a little deeper into into <laughs> sub 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 genres even on occasion. Oh, uh, it's gonna be fantastic! So if you follow us on the newsletter, you will find out more about the second volume in the forthcoming month okay but in the meantime it was an absolute pleasure to have you with us tonight and i hope our viewers uh, at home or wherever they are on the go have also enjoyed finding out more about specfic for newbies so thank you once again for being with us uh, tiffany and val it's been a pleasure to thank have you. you on our channel <laughs> Thank you. So it is good night from me and it is good night from you. <laughs> good night, everybody. Thank you very much. Bye bye. <laughs> what are the benefits that uh, our book, Specfic for Newbies, um, I can't speak English. What are the benefits <laughs> that, can, uh, that this book can bring to our readers? Yes, this is Friday afternoon. That's what happens. Okay. <laughs> I did this four times yesterday and re-recorded it today. I totally understand. I just lost the ability to speak. Uh, yeah. Do you want to answer that one first, Val? Yeah, I'm happy to do that. Okay. Um, okay. So no, wait, let me, let me answer, answer the question. Answer the question. Wait, let me answer the question. Okay. <laughs> I suppose what makes specific... No, wait, 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 let, let, let me ask you the no. question first. Wait, yes, wait. sorry. <laughs> Getting too excited. All right. Okay, so... Um, right, so, Instra you know, in instructive. You say instructive in English. Yes. <laughs> I, found <yeah>. it <laughs> I found it instructive. Um, Oh, sorry. I mean, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> about book two. Sorry, let, let me let me do that. Let me do that. <laughs>